Up with Crim begins now. 7.30 this morning. It is our team, our town, our time. This morning on Up with Crim, we're checking in with our crews in Indy. Crim 2's own Mark Hanrahan is there this morning with our sports director, Brenna Green. Good morning from downtown Indianapolis, where Gonzaga is heading back to the Final Four. We spoke with Mark Few, Jalen Suggs, and numerous fans last night about their momentous win. Plus, Mark tells us about um, some fans he spoke to about some hard-hitting questions. <laughs> you guys know where Gonzaga's from? Spokane. Washington State. Oh. Spokane, Washington, yeah. Well, this morning, the fans who know the answers and some of the other ones we helped correct the, with the pronunciation. But first, some other Spokane locals are also headed to the Final Four this morning. What to expect from the whole Twins. And we're taking you outside on this Wednesday morning. Calm wind, clear skies, cool temps. We're talking a warm afternoon now. Well, our very own Dana Marie McNichol got to watch her Zags advance to the Final Four for the second time in program history. You can tell how pumped she is, and they're now headed to the Final Four, and you can see how great that energy is. I'm not an official Zag, but I'm definitely a fan now, and I just can't imagine what it was like to see that in person. This morning, we're joined by Brenna Green and Mark Hanrahan from Indianapolis. Good morning, guys. As you guys know by now, Gonzaga dominating USC last night. As I said on, or as we showed you on Up with Krim yesterday, uh, USC's head coach Andy Infield sure. said before Gonzaga's game that, or before their game against Gonzaga, that he hadn't watched enough film of the team yet <laughs> to know if uh, they, he'd played a similar team yet this year. And uh, I think he wished he watched a little bit more film now. Yeah, it's a kind of an odd thing to say, isn't it? My it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah. that's okay. We move on. Move on to the next next game. Absolutely. Well, speaking of, you know, Gonzaga has been good for a long time, a couple of decades. It's her 23rd trip to the tournament. So I wanted to find out if people here in Indy, basketball fans, if they know about Gonzaga, like how to pronounce the name correctly, where they're from in Washington. So I hit the streets to find out if they knew about the Bulldogs. A little NCAA trivia for you. Uh, who was the number one seeded overall team in the tournament? Number one overall seed, Gonzaga Bulldogs out of out of uh, Spokane, Washington. What you want? Was it Baylor? <laughs> Gonzaga. <laughs> I actually knew that one. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Gonzaga, and you pronounced it correctly. Yeah. Not, Holy moly. not Gonzaga or whatever. That's, that's not an Arkansas joke, is it? Do <laughs> <laughs> you know where they're from? Uh, Washington, right? You know what city? Spokane, right? You guys know where Gonzaga's from? Spokane. Washington State? Oh. Spokane, Washington, yeah. State of Washington. I did not know that. Washington? I couldn't, couldn't tell you the city. Tacoma. Close, Spokane. Spokane. Hey, man. I was feeling yeah, you good about, had an idea, feeling man. about it. Uh, they're from Washington State, right? Yeah. Do you know what city? Oh. I don't think I do. Do you guys know any of the players on Gonzaga squad this year? Jalen Suggs, yeah. starting point guard. Uh, Timmy, uh, he's the starting center. Yep. That's, that's that's all I got. Adam Morrison. Corey Kispert, one of the best scorers in the country. Can you name a few? Yeah, Drew Timmy, Corey Kispert, Jalen Suggs, uh, Joel Aie, um, Andrew Nemhart. What do you think about Gonzaga? Overrated. Would you agree? No, I would, I'm gonna go with the opposite. Gonzaga is scary. That offense is really good. Come on, overrated? That, that was hilarious. But I like the guy from Michigan, Mark. He knew a lot about Gonzaga's team. He didn't know Spokane, though. That's true. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was actually surprised. I was expecting to hear a whole lot of more Spokanes yeah. in Gonzaga's. But Gonzaga's been good for so long, people at least know about them, right? And um, I don't know, it's it kind of cool to just talk to people here locally 2,000 miles away. And as you heard, a lot of them know about the team, know they're in Washington, and they know several of their players. 
Yeah. The education is working. It has taken about <laughs> yeah. 20 years, right. but uh, people are finally figuring out what's going on with yeah. this team. And one quick pro tip, if you're trying to tell somebody how to pronounce Gonzaga, we spoke with Gonzaga's president yesterday, and he said, just think about it, they zig, we zag. Okay. Gonzaga. That's it's it. Zags. There you it's go. It's easy. But nobody yeah. zogs. Less than complete. Oh, it makes <laughs> no, me cringe every That's time. That's not a thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you know, Dana Jacobson also said last night that, you know, Spokane was a small town. Let's set the record straight. We're not a small town. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Look, Tim, Mark, and I yeah. all started our careers in the same town in Great Falls, Montana. We know too. what a small town looks like. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, that, that's definitely a small town. Spokane's not a small town. <laughs> Well, coming up, we know Gonzaga men's basketball will play in the final four on Saturday against UCLA, who's a familiar NCAA tournament foe for the Zags. Yeah, Karthik joins us now in studio with the good and the bad of those two games. Hi, Karthik. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Yeah, Gonzaga and UCLA have played twice in the NCAA tournament. One a happy moment, the other one is one of the most heartbreaking moments in program history. The last time they played was the happy moment in 2015. Shemek Karnowski with a couple behind the back passes. First one to DeMontis Sabonis. Whew, that's clean. Finish it with the dunk. Oh, yeah, and this one also to Sabonis, but this one for a layup. But it was still nice. Shemek was on his way and he was balling out. The Zags really pulled away in this game. 74-62 would end up being the final in that one. And then the other moment, well, this one's just pain for Gonzaga fans. GU was up by 17 points in the first half. Adam Morrison was on fire in that game. Gonzaga up by 10 with about six minutes to go. And that's when everything really started to collapse. But well, UCLA would just come back, storm back in that game and ended up winning it to move on to the Elite Eight that season. Uh, one of the most iconic moments from that game was Adam Morrison on the floor at the end of the game in tears, overcome with emotion, knowing that that would be his last season at GU. Uh, it's just one of the most iconic moments really in NCAA tournament history and really one that GU fans really don't like talking about and like to forget. But at that point, it's in the past, so that's good news. And while well, GU's moving on, they're going to play an 11 seed UCLA team who's on their Cinderella story run. And well, they've been beating some pretty good teams in this tournament. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those ones where you look at them and you go, okay, they've come a long way, but you kind of have to go through those big upset moments mm -hmm. to get where they are today, right? The tough moments make you stronger. What do they say? Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's right. Hey, at GU went through those moments, but now they're the, they're the team that's 30-0 uh, and 0 and looking to break some more uh, people's backs there uh, in the final two games. And you know what? Hopefully, Karthik, they have earned the respect from UCLA to watch some tape. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, come on. L at least watch the tape. That one confused me. I was sitting here and when I saw that Andy Enfield comment, I was just like, well, if you haven't watched the tape, you're in a little bit of trouble because Mark Few has said, uh, you know, that their team had been preparing even before the Creighton game for the potential of playing USC or Oregon in that contest. So, you know, uh, Andy's got to start doing his homework. Yeah, got to prepare. <laughs> All right, and everybody should do their homework in terms of the weather in the next few days. A couple things you should know. Each morning, going to be chilly. This morning, no exception. We're seeing temperatures right around freezing across much of the inland northwest. A couple 20s over there in Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint. But this right now is the coldest point of the entire day. Here, rather quickly, temperatures are going to start to rise. We're at 31 in Spokane. And with the sun coming up, expect it to warm up and warm up quick. We are going to hang on to that sun through much of the day. More sun than what we saw yesterday, and that means that we don't have that brief moment in the middle part of the day where we lose some of that daytime heating. So here's how I think it breaks down. We go from near freezing early on this morning up to about 50 degrees by noon, and that means by noon we're going to be warmer than we were yesterday, and by this afternoon we're knocking on the door of 60. And coming up in your full forecast, I'm going to break down just how warm we get in the next couple of days. We're going to talk another round of wind and what weather is looking like as we head into the holiday weekend. And coming up after the break, an update on the third stimulus checks. We'll tell you how many people are also fully vaccinated. That's coming up on Three Things Coronavirus this morning. And two Spokane natives will also be making their way into the final four. After the break, we'll tell you how Lexi and Lacey Hall helped the Stanford women's team keep dancing in San Antonio. 
And take a look at these pictures. These are some vintage Zag pictures from the infamous 1999 team. This morning, we'll be joined by one of the team members from that famous year. We'll also be joined by a cheerleader from that same year. Best part, they're married. And we're calling them a power couple this morning. They're joining us this morning on Uplift Creme right around 840. Our team, our town, our time. You can only watch the Zags play in the Final Four on Cram 2. The Bulldogs will take on UCLA on Saturday at 534 Pacific Time. Again, that's a game you're only going to see on Cram 2.